Hey guys, Ed Bird. I'm back today talking about 100 miles in the Infinity Run. Welcome back friends, Ed Bud here. I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas, hanging out with friends, family, acquaintances, eating, drinking, and just having a generally jolly time. So I'm back with my 100 mile review in the Nike Infinity Run. This is a React based midsole shoe. I managed to pick it up very early, uh, way before it was released, um, back at the back end of November I think it was when I managed to uh, acquire these. So I've endeavoured to get up to 100 miles of them as quickly as possible to give you my honest opinions. I think this one's launched around about January the 3rd if you're a Nike Plus, uh, one of those Nike club members, I don't know what it's called these days, something along those lines. It's released to the general public around about the 16th of January. I believe the retail price is going to be around about £129, so it's not quite as high as I initially thought it was going to be at retail. It puts it in just about £10 under the ASICS Glide Ride, uh, which I think is a kind of a similar sort of shoe, it occupies a kind of similar space to me at least. So a brief bit of information about this shoe, it's roughly a 9mm drop. From the heel to the toe, as you can see it's a maximally cushioned shoe. There's an awful lot of React foam here. There's a lot of comparisons I think people are making to some of the offerings from Hoka Oni Oni. I really think this shoe kind of, after 100 miles at least, occupies a slightly different space to those Hoka shoes. You can see there is a distinct kind of rocker action there, but I felt like this shoe really hits the spot for me right around this midpoint area, around about the midfoot. It really does work well for me there. Um, I'm not sure it's something I'd want to use um, if I was a heel striker perhaps, but if you're a midfoot or forefoot striker, this shoe's going to work really well for you. There's a little bit of more traditional flyknit around the heel collar area here, and then there's a somewhat thicker, denser flyknit around the toe box area here and up around the sort of midfoot area. It really is quite reminiscent to me of that kind of packaging material you get with technology like laptops and things like that, um, this, this kind of material. It really does have that feel to it. It's kind of very sort of uh, sheer, kind of cellular sort of feeling. It's very soft, certainly, and it feels very strong. I don't think there's gonna be any problems with this shoe as you rack up the miles in it in terms of durability. So straight off the bat, I think the Infinity Run is gonna be a fantastic everyday trainer for pretty much everybody. I've taken them out on all sorts of different training runs, different activities, between about three miles and 13 miles. It responds well to pretty much anything, unless you wanna go serious all out speed. If you're perhaps doing some uh, a 5K race, for example, I probably wouldn't pick these shoes, but certainly as an everyday trainer, uh, something to build up that core strength, I think this is gonna be a fantastic shoe. As I say, I've worn these for all sorts of different training activities between three and 13 miles, between paces of about seven minutes per mile, to eight minutes per mile. Monthly miles have been around about 140, 150 over the last few months, and this trainer really arrived just at the right time for that. I'm stepping up the mileage um, as I look towards 2020 to enter a couple of marathons. Not entirely sure where yet, but certainly this shoe arrived right on time. Certainly a good shoe where I've pulled back the pace. It's around about that eight minute per mile kind of territory. That's ideal for me really for kind of still active sort of recovery style uh, running. So a few examples of the kind of paces that I've managed to achieve within this shoe. On Christmas day, I was really under the cosh in terms of time and needed to get back to the house. I was involved with some very light duties involving the dinner and all that sort of thing. And um, this shoe certainly can move if you want it to. So I use these for a quick three mile run around about seven minutes, eight seconds per mile average pace. Clocked in about 21 minutes, 30 seconds on a very flat route. It's one of the routes that uh, I think the Yeovil Park Run utilise when they adopt the B course, uh, which is down closer to the town centre. It's nice and flat, it's quite narrow in places, so for the Park Run you have to be a little bit careful, as in who's coming the other way. Some of the tracks are very narrow. But certainly this shoe really responded well. Didn't really have to put in masses of effort to get up to that pace either. I feel the React, or the, at least the placement of the React in this shoe is fantastic. Certainly in comparison to something like the Zoom Fly 3, which I've really struggled in. So certainly these are versatile enough to hit a seven minute per mile pace, if required, for me anyway. So on the flip side of that, I put the Infinity Run into action again for a run around about the half marathon distance of 13.1 miles at just under eight minutes per mile pace. 
with that sort of pace I can keep the heart rate to around about 140 uh, beats per minute which is pretty low really I think for that kind of uh, average pace so certainly keeping the effort in that sort of easier territory and these shoes are fantastic for that uh, my legs and my ankles my feet felt absolutely fantastic after utilizing the infinity run for that type of distance I would suggest this is an out and out stability shoe I'm a relatively neutral runner I'm not perfect, my running gait isn't anywhere near perfect, I'm just one of those guys that just loves running. But I haven't really felt any of those stability elements within this shoe whilst running. Uh, the shoe just disappears for me. Uh, it just makes running a very enjoyable experience. And I've certainly felt strong, I felt, I felt like I've pushed myself, I felt like I've done some considerable efforts in this shoe. Certainly lifting the mileage up over the last couple of months, uh, using this shoe but not once have I felt a twinge nothing at all it's just been a really great shoe or well, perhaps Nike's research that they conducted is actually true it's certainly going to be a good shoe in terms of preventing injury yeah I can safely say that I've not felt a single moment of discomfort while using this shoe it's just been a really pleasant experience I've really enjoyed using it every time. I think when you get a shoe like that, when you're constantly reaching for it going, that's the one you want to use today. It may not be the newest shoe you have, um, but I've certainly felt that with the Infinity Run. Another example of the different paces that this shoe can handle, I ran a 6.2 mile sort of time trial, I guess, uh, the other week in the Infinity Run. I hit around about seven minutes, six seconds per mile pace uh, average. I think it was 44 minutes 06, something like that. So just over 44 minutes. So I think that really does prove that the shoe is more than capable of higher speeds, higher paces if needed. It does handle pace relatively well, although I would suggest that you need to spend a little bit of time with the lockdown. I think that leads me to my one and only minor gripe with the Infinity Run is that of the lacing system. It doesn't really allow for a huge amount of adjustment or configurability. You're missing those extra eyelets here for a runner's knot. You've really got to just work with what you've got. You can tighten the laces up, obviously, across the forefoot here and kind of really sort of ratchet them down. But, of course, that can lead to some problems as you're running and your foot starts to expand somewhat. And it can lead to a little bit of pain. I haven't really experienced that at all, but I have experienced that within another fly knit shoe the Vaporfly 4% Gyakuso edition. I remember during the Heron Half Marathon, I think I got up to about the 10th or 11th mile, and I had this really weird pain over the top of my forefoot. It just appeared out of nowhere, and I couldn't figure it out. It did sort of start to go away after a while, but I had to bring the pace back a tiny bit. Afterwards, I remember Kev Burton mentioning to me, it's probably the lacing, you've just over-tightened them slightly, and as your foot expands towards the end of the race, I got a little bit of forefoot, Discomfort, I would suggest it was, not pain, real, really discomfort. Whether that will be the case with something like the Infinity Run, I don't know. It does have a very similar feel to the Flyknit across the kind of tongue area. That side, I've always managed to get a decent lockdown with the Infinity Run by taking a little bit of time while lacing it up and making sure I'm using specific socks. I think perhaps that might put off a few people that are used to that kind of very tight, lockdown, perhaps ASIC sort of feel over the forefoot there, who don't want any sort of slippage at all, they don't want any movement there. That could perhaps be a bit of a negative to you guys. I'd suggest you do want to expect a little bit of movement here in the heel area. You're going to get a tiny little bit of slippage. I haven't really had a problem with it whatsoever. I've used air, all types of socks really with the Infinity Run. I've not had a massive problem with heel slippage whatsoever. But it's just something to bear in mind. And I've got to be honest, with this shoe, there's very few minor gripes at all that I've got with it. In terms of wear on the outsole of the shoe, I have some very, very slight wear at the toe area here, sort of from, probably from toe off. There's almost no perceivable wear really here on the sort of midfoot area, and nothing on the heel. Almost no wear whatsoever across the outsole on the Infinity Run after 100 miles. That leads me to suggest that the rubber's gonna be pretty durable. I wouldn't say it's as durable as perhaps the high abrasion stuff that's on the glide ride, but I think certainly I'm gonna to look to probably get about three to 400 miles out of these. I really do love the toe box on this. Um, you can see, you know, there's 100 miles of effort gone into this one. It's really quite discolored here. I'm not too fussed about that. These things are designed to be battered and 
used out there in the elements and this is what they're designed for. It's kind of like where you've got those guitars, you know, in the uh, glass cases. Or I know these guys that own really expensive boutique guitar amplifiers and they never take them out of the house. What's the point? What is the point in it? It's crazy, it's not rock and roll. That toe box area really is wonderful. It's lovely and roomy. I've got quite large feet really, very long toes. And it's really nice to have that sort of wiggle room there in the toe box. Um, you don't feel like you're closed in as I have done in some shoes this year. Certainly a really heavenly feeling inside the toe box of the Infinity Run. I guess it's a little bit like getting the very first row of seats um, when you get on a plane. If you're a very tall fellow like myself, I always love getting those seats where you're right by the exit, of course, because you can get out quick as well if you needed to, but that's not what I'm talking about here. You can stretch your legs out and you can feel that room. It's really wonderful. I haven't experienced that odd react issue around here in the sort of balls of my foot. I haven't experienced that whatsoever. I certainly did in the Zoom Fly 3, had a real issue there. It just left me a couple of times feeling really sore actually underneath the ball of my foot. I haven't had that at all in the Infinity Run. That foam in the midsole feels bouncy, it feels responsive, like a gummy bear pillow without the sticky nature of those fruit jelly wildlife beasts. What the hell does that mean? I said earlier, I'm a fairly neutral uh, foot striker. I think I've improved actually a hell of a lot over the last year in terms of my running gait, in terms of my foot strike. That side, who cares as long as you're moving forward. I think it does depend a little bit actually on my mood, on my tiredness, uh, whether my daughter's been behaving that day or not. Come to think of it, I think recently those faster efforts have been on days where she's been far from angelic. Anyone that's a parent out there, you know what I mean. This shoe really works for me. I think it could work for you too. I don't mean Bono and the Edge and all that, I mean you as well at home. I really wanted to keep running in this shoe. It felt good, it feels enjoyable every time I've taken it out. It's like I could just run into infinity and beyond. I've gone true to size in this one and I'd recommend that you do too. True to size is wise here. No need to size up, everybody say. So, okay, this one's gonna stay in the rotation. I'm gonna keep rolling with it. I really do love it. Aesthetically, I think it looks fantastic as well. It really is a great looking shoe, this one. What do you think, Beast? Does this one look good? Yeah, it gets the Beast seal of approval. It opened one eye. I think that's what it means anyway. If you've got any more questions about the Nike React Infinity Run, please comment below and I shall do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. If you're thinking about getting this one, let me know in the comments. Please remember to hit the like button on this video. It helps the channel out. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Just when you thought I was gone. Look out very soon for an initial run, probably the last shoe review of the year. What's in here? You'll soon find out.